welcome to Sew Addicts. My name is Dami, and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to make the one shoulder top. So I actually have a video showing the off shoulder look, which is super similar to the one shoulder top, but very, very different. So if you wanna check that out, I linked the link down below for you guys to, so you could click on it and definitely watch that video and I hope you enjoy it. But back to the one shoulder top, I absolutely am a sucker for this top because I think it's super flattering and I just love the idea of showing a little bit of your shoulder and still having, you know, some kind of sleeve. So I hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial. And of course I'm gonna be showing you guys the fabrics you need for this tutorial as well. You wanna get a lightweight to a medium weight kind of fabric that has a little bit of stretch to it. Or you could just get something that's super stretchy like a jersey or knit fabric. Either of those kind of fabrics are gonna work, but you don't wanna get something too heavy or bulky or stiff because you're, you're, you're pretty much not gonna be able to get into your top. So you wanna stay something a little bit light and just medium weight and has a little bit of stretch. And of course, if you guys noticed, I did add uh, a very pretty, pretty lace pretty pretty <laughs> I added a pretty lace to my uh, top as well because I thought it was really delicate and it added some kind of pizzazz to it but you don't have to you know go for a second option of fabric you can just stick to one but if you want to like do too much then you could definitely add a second fabric as well and I got a yard and a half for my main fabric so you kind of know um, around how many yards to get as well and that's pretty much it if you're new here welcome to my channel if you like what you see so far do not hesitate to subscribe and if you want to follow me on my journey follow me on Instagram at Dami at NIKX or just tag me in any of your fantastic photos and oh right we have a new set slash color paint thing I guess I don't know I kind of like it but let me know what you guys think about the new set if it's uh yeah, I'm just, I'm open. Just let me know what you guys think. So apart from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let's get started. To get our pattern, we're gonna be using a button down shirt. So you wanna get a shirt that's kind of loosely fitted and, and not too tight. So now in order for my shirt to stay intact and in place, I'm pinning down all the way down the center of the shirt. Now we're gonna grab our fabric and lay it out. So I'm also measuring about 12 inches in my fabric because this is more than a quarter of my waist measurement. So now you just wanna draw a straight line from the top of your fabric to the bottom of pretty much a little bit past where your top length is going to be. So now we're gonna be laying the button down shirt on the line. So you wanna lay the center of the button down shirt on the line. This allows our pattern to be somewhat straight and not technically off grain. So you have a nice uh, grain going down your uh, one shoulder shirt. So this also allows our fabric to kind of stay in place and not move a lot. If you're having problems with your fabric moving, you could definitely just go ahead and pin this basically all around the shirt. It really doesn't matter how many pins. So for now, we're not really gonna worry about the sleeves. We're gonna talk about that later. So I am gonna just trace one part of the shoulder because it is a one shoulder top. So I decided to put my shoulder on this side of my shirt. So we're just gonna trace that shoulder out. And then you also wanna trace your sleeve curve. So I'm just pulling up my sleeve and tracing up the curve that's already on my shirt. Now that we've done that, we're also gonna be tracing our chest. So after you measure your chest measurement over your bust, we're gonna be dividing that by two and whatever measurement you get is what your chest measurement is gonna be. So I measured my shirt and my shirt was about 18 inches, but my chest measurement was about two inches smaller. So I just took one inch from both sides. So now that I've marked one inch less, as you guys can see, now we're gonna talk about our waist. So you also wanna measure around your waist and when you divide that by two, you can accurately tell what your waist measurement is. But this is not supposed to be a really tight shirt, so you wanna give your waist measurement about maybe an inch or an inch and a half uh, looseness. So I also measured that and when I measured, um, the waist of my shirt was way bigger than I needed it to be. So I measured about an inch and a quarter in on both sides. But this measurement still gives me about an inch and a half looseness on my waist. 
So you want to measure your waist in and also mark them as well, just like you did for the chest. So now that we've done our chest measurement, we're also going to be doing the bottom. So I like how flare my bottom was. You don't also want your bottom to be too tight. And so I just kind of kept the same measurement as my bottom as well. But you could definitely make yours smaller, but you really don't want it to be too fitted in your bottom. As you can see, my shirt is also a high low, but I kind of went with the length of the front. Now we got all the marks, the waist, the bottom, the chest, and also the shoulders. So then you could just take off all the pins and we're going to, you know, kind of mark up our lines and trace them out properly. So I'm just going to uh, square off all my armholes, make sure that the curves look nice and square off my shoulders as well. You want to make sure that your lines are pretty straight. And then of course, I'm just connecting my shoulder to my chest, which is the one shoulder neckline. So I'm just connecting everything from my waist to my chest, to also the bottom of the top. So then I proceeded to add seam allowance all around, a half inch seam allowance on my neck, my shoulders, my arm holes, and pretty much throughout the top. So for the back, it's pretty much the same thing over. I have a, a pleat at my back, so in order to do with the pleat, if you have a pleat at your back, you could just lay that nicely and just pin your pleat and then you could just pretty much trace out the same thing just like we did for the front with all the same measurements. So now we're moving on to actually tracing out our sleeves. So you want to put your fabric on fold this time and we're going to take our shirt and we're gonna trace out the sleeve of the shirt. So basically you want to put the top of your sleeve right there on the fold of the fabric. So I'm just gonna pin that down, making sure that the fold is at the edge of my fold of fabric as well. So you can pin that all the way around, making sure that your fabric is pretty stable on there. And of course, I'm just tracing out my sleeve because I love the fit of this sleeve. So I'm just tracing that out. And remember, I came in about an inch on my chest. So you also want to come in a little bit at the top of your sleeve, depending on how much you came in on your shirt as well. So again, I'm tracing out my sleeve uh, curve, making sure that I get that. And now I'm just measuring how long I want my sleeve to be. So I did mine 18 inches because I'm still going to add a uh, addition, a bell addition to it, as you guys saw before. So I'm just making it about three quarters length total. And so that's where the 18 inches was. So now I'm just screwing up all my lines, making sure they're right. And you want to make sure that everything is looking good. And of course, you could definitely just add all your seam allowances to this and pretty much just cut out your fabric as well. So now I actually went ahead and sewed the sleeve part of my top where the sleeve and the shoulder is. And I actually realized that I do want to put somewhat of a band at the top of my chest so it holds it really like nicely. So I want my band to be an inch and a half. So I'm going to be cutting off an inch and a half both from my front and back. If you don't want a band to go across your chest, you could definitely just ignore this step and definitely just finish your neckline in a regular way. But if you want to bend, you want to do this for your front and your back. So I'm cutting off an inch and a half on both sides. So now for my band, you just want to get a nice strip of fabric that's about maybe six inches wide and you want to press that really nicely. So now we're going to be taking our front neckline, which I marked front so I don't make a mistake for both uh, front and back. So, and now we're going to be basically laying this on the fabric that we have. And I'm just measuring the inch and a half band that I said I wanted. So I'm measuring from the top of the fold to the edge of my neckline an inch and a half. And then when you have this, we're going to be tracing our neckline on that little piece of fabric and also tracing up the edges, making sure it lines up with our original top. So my shoulders are all lined up and the edges are all lined up and now my neckline is all lined up. And when you have that, 
you could put as many pins as you like so it lays really nicely and in place and we're just gonna cut that out so you want to add a, a seam allowance also at the bottom but remember we already have seam allowances at our shoulders and the side so we don't really need to add seam allowances at that point just at the bottom so when you're done with your front you want to do the same thing for your back as well So now that I have the front and back of my chest bands cut out, I also decided to cut it out in the lace fabric I had as well. So this is going to go over the main fabric. So now we're going to attach it to the neckline of our main fabric. And you want to make sure that the front piece you cut is going on the front and the back piece you cut is also going on the back. So I labeled mine just to make sure. So now we're going to be attaching these chest bands at the shoulder seam right there. And I'm just pinning this and laying this down so you guys can kind of see how I'm going to sew this on the sewing machine. So I went ahead and I sewed this down and I also pressed it really nicely as you guys can see. And this is what we're going to be attaching to our necklines for our front and back. So again, you want to make sure that you're attaching the front to the front and attaching the back to the back. Now I'm just going to pin both shoulder seams together, making sure that they're matching up really nicely. And I'm just gonna walk my chest band all around the neckline, making sure that it fits all the way around. So you wanna also ease the uh, chest band into your neckline because your neckline is a little stretchy. So you don't want your neckline too stretched out. So you wanna kinda just ease it and walk through uh, the neckline. So now that you have that pin all the way, we're going to sew that down on the sewing machine. So of course I went ahead, sewed this down and I also pressed it really nicely, but you could also snip right there at the shoulder point because this is going to allow the chest band layover really nice. So now that we have that, we're going to fold this over and in order to finish the inside of our chest band, we're just going to push in our half inch seam allowance and I'm just going to pin that and this is where we're going to be top stitching on the sewing machine. So you're going to be top stitching from the front, but you're also going to catch the back. So again, I went ahead and pinned this all around as you guys can see here, all around at the back and I'm just going to top stitch from the front, making sure that it catches the back. So you want to keep checking to make sure it catches. So this is how it looks like when it's all sewn up. As you can see, the back has been cut as well. So now that we have our chest band sewn up, we're also going to be attaching our sleeve. So I just went ahead and sewed the side seams of my sleeve and now I'm just going to attach it to my top as well. So you want to make sure that all the points match and your seams are also matching and now we're just going to sew this all around. So I also went ahead and sewed this on my sewing machine. So now we're gonna prep for our bell sleeve attachment for the sleeve right before we put in our zipper. So in order to prep for this, you wanna get a piece of fabric that's about eight inches wide and maybe about 30 inches long. You could definitely make yours a little longer, but this is a pretty decent size. So again, I cut this out and I also cut this out in my lace fabric because this is gonna be going on top of the blue fabric. So of course, I also left the scallops because I thought it was really pretty. And we're gonna be gathering this at the bottom of our sleeve. So now we're just gonna attach our zipper right away I uh, made my zipper about nine inches long. You could definitely make yours a little longer as well, but nine inches was a pretty decent size for me to actually get into my top because that's all you really need, want. You want to be able to get into your top. So I just pinned this for you guys so you guys could see, and I went ahead and sewed this down on the sewing machine. And I also finished the bottom of my hem. I folded it twice and just put that in the sewing machine as well. So now, coming back to our bell sleeves, now that I have both fabrics, we're actually going to be finishing all the edges of the blue fabric as well. So I'm finishing the bottom with just a basic jean hem and the sides with a French seam. So on the machine, as you guys can see, I'm finishing the bottom of the blue fabric with a basic jean hem, just folding that twice and sewing it on the sewing machine. But when it comes to the other sides, I'm going to be doing a French seam so it's much cleaner. So again, you want to put right sides of your fabrics together 
and mine isn't really obvious which the right side is because my fabric is just like that but you want to put right sides together trim this down a little bit and sew it left sides together so now this is your front seam it's looking nice at the outside and it looks nice at the top as well so i also proceeded and did the same seam for my lace as well so now that we've sewn both uh, pieces of fabric together we're gonna actually gather both of them together so you want to make sure that both seams are matching and we're gonna be sewing a basting stitch at the top of both fabric so make sure to set your stitch length to about a five and I'm just sewing about a quarter of an inch in from the edge all the way around with both fabrics together so and when you've done that you want to cut your thread a, a longer length and pick one of the threads up and this is just gonna allow you to gather the fabric all the way around to the desired length so in order to figure out your desired length you want to grab your sleeve and measure the opening of the sleeve and mine was five inches so that's ten inches all around so i'm just going to be gathering my bell sleeve to about ten inches and when you have this down it looks something like you know a bouncy skirt a little bit <laughs> you're just gonna sew this all around your sleeve opening so if you're sewing it you want to make sure that everything is laying nicely all your seams the seams from your sleeve and the sleeves from the uh, attachment is also matching up you could also go ahead and pin this so it's much easier I find it very easy when I just pin stuff and I'm able to sew it down really nicely so when you pin this you can just run that through the sewing machine and you're pretty much done so now that we've attached this this is the end of our top and everything looks great <laughs> watching this video guys I hope you guys learned a lot and you actually enjoyed this video so now you probably love the one shoulder top I love the one shoulder top and now we could all love the one shoulder top so do not hesitate to scroll down and leave me a couple of words comments suggestions anything I'm definitely looking at that as well and do not also hesitate to give this video a big like if you love it and since you made it to the end of this video do not also hesitate to subscribe hit that subscribe button down there and I also want to see all your fantastic photos so please tag me on Instagram at Dami and I hope to catch you awesome so addicts next week yeah.